Welcome to Inside Russia. My name is Konstantin and I am streaming live from the very heart of Russia, the, s the capital of the south, Rostov-on-Don. Welcome, my friends. Great, great to have you. Great, great to see you and great to have you here. Welcome. I hope today we have an interesting topic and you'll like it. We're going to talk, we are going to be talking about the old country where I'm coming from, good old USSR, and the new country where I'm going into. And, uh, you know, I'll talk about that, my vision, so to speak. So, welcome, and uh, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Not too long ago, I made a video called rip russia rest in peace russia the brief history of russia that i knew 1991 to 2022 because in my opinion what is happening right now is the birth and involvement of a new country that is being is replacing russia so to speak the russia the old russia that i knew I've many times said that I don't know what the name of this country will be, and I have no clue. But today, I dare to present a new name for the country. It's not, you know, the new Russia, it's not the Russian world, nothing like that. How about the USSR version 2.0? Upgraded and improved. Why the USSR? Again, you, among my videos, previous videos, you, you might have heard, you might have heard quite a few times that I say, "Hey, USSR is coming back." The USSR is, you know, I smell, I've seen, I've heard this music before, I smelt this stink before, and so forth. You know. Um, now I'm actually going to tell you, explain why. I think the USSR is coming back, but the new USSR, 21st century USSR. I'm going to break down of what it's going to be all about. Now, what was the USSR, the Soviet Union, the classic, the, 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 the old one, the only one? Well, let's put it this way. The USSR was a country with a special relationship between the government and the people. There was a very strong government that seized control over everything and left very few freedoms to its citizens. The economic model, the social model, the legal model, all dictated by the government institutions. And the government was led by a group of people, older people. Um, the citizens of the USSR were very limited in their rights. Uh, instead they kind of had life where the state was taking care of them. No freedom, but no starvation. So to speak, a social contract. <laughs> social contract that was not wanted by people, but was forced onto people by the government. That's very, very basic explanation what, what the USSR was. The government usurpated power, and it told people what to do. It limited the freedoms, and it stirred people into the direction that the government wanted it to go, wanted them to go to. Okay, Russia was born in 1991, and Russia was completely different. Russia was free. Um, from having too much control, 
of the government in the USSR overnight literally overnight Russia went to having no control of people from the government the government kind of disappeared it became very weak um, I would say it's, it became nominal um, the government was there but it did not control anything gosh even cops were pretty powerless back then and the people have st uh, started taking power into their own hands, so to speak. The good and the bad. The good, there were many businesses, thriving businesses. Russia started developing economically over 10 years. The bad mafia was um, uncontrolled and rampant. Um, anyway, so in Russia, there was complete freedom. No laws, anything went. Um, people were free to do anything they wanted to. Then in the 2000s, things started changing. And at first, the changes were tiny. And then, uh, but you know what? Many tiny changes amount to one big, huge transformation. Uh, take thousand stones um, small ones put them together and that's going to be one huge pyramid okay and that's how Rus russian government worked um it started taking control back uh well basically increasing its own control and it was actually not too bad at first um things improved greatly in terms of order in terms of safety in terms of regulations but then quickly that thin line where things were okay to regulate was stepped over and uh, the government went further on marching getting more and more power making um, bureaucrats the government officials more powerful than ever and so forth anyway russia as i knew ended on February 24th, 2022. I made a video about that. The video is called um, Brief History of Russia Through My Eyes. Actually, I personally like that video. I, I tell my experience of living in the Russia that I knew and, and I loved very much. So go and check it out. It's, it's a pretty cool video. Now, what happened on the 24th of... February of 2022, well, we all know, right, military conflict with our neighbor, but that's what you see if you're looking at Russia from afar, from a foreign country. You see hostile elections against Ukraine, but <clears throat> we are seeing that too from inside Russia, but we are also seeing something done being done something have had something uh, has been done uh, to transform the country that's why i'm saying a new country was born and it's been evolving right in front of our eyes so what are the changes and why this new country we can say uh, safely that this new country is being born well First huge transformation was that laws limiting freedoms were introduced. And they were introduced actually way, way before February 24th. Okay, but after, um, before it was just stepping stones, okay, small changes. Like I explained before, for example, uh, freedom of assembly, free assembly, was taken away in a way that uh, at first people were disallowed to assemble without permission of the local governments. And there were rules, frameworks set up for um, getting permissions. Then, after a while, a new law was introduced that would limit already limited uh, freedoms. 
for example, no more than three people were allowed to assembly uh, without permission of the government. Then that law was amended <coughs> and new regulations were in place. No more than one person was allowed to assembly. <laughs> That's what kind of assembly is that, basically. And now, even if one person gets out and starts voicing opinions as there's certain things, the person is um, detained, usually. Well, so, the framework, legal framework, groundwork started way before, but it solidified on the 20, well, shortly after 24th. They were new laws, very strict, very harsh laws, okay, where um, old laws were amended, new ones created. For example, uh, there's a law that limits the speech of Russian citizens. Um, if a Russian citizen contradicts something said about Russian military, said by the government from the official source, then it's considered spreading fakes and disinformation, and it's a punishable offense. And the punishment is actually quite harsh, up to 15 years in prison. First-degree murder in Russia is not that harsh. You think for yourself. Um, another law, if a person is calling for more sanctions from foreign companies or foreign governments onto Russia, that's also considered a um, punishable offense. Also, there's another law that if a person uh, criticizes work of Russian um, branches of government abroad, that's also considered spreading fakes and disinformation. Well, you can do that. That's a punishable offense. Now, these are very serious limitations of freedom. Of course, the government explains explained um, quite well why it created new laws, you know, because out of a sheer necessity. Uh, but you know what? They can explain all they want. Uh, we have, it's black and white. We either have the laws or we don't. And we have the laws. So, freedom of assembly, freedom of speech. Now, very limited. Back in the USSR, very limited. We see parallels. Now I'm going to be telling you the parallels, why I think that the USSR is being reborn. So, number one is the laws limiting freedoms. I've heard that music before. Good old USSR. Number two, increase, increase in government, governmental control of economy. Now, it's not a secret that the USSR had planned economy. We called it planned economy. Um, definitely not free market. Government told companies what to do, what to produce. Goods, services, products, everything was decided in Moscow, in the Ministry of... Um, Ministry of Industry, I think, something like that. Uh, Gosplan, there was a branch of the government, the, s uh, the, the state planning department, Gosplan. And inside Gosplan, everything was decided. How many combined harvesters will be produced following year? How many um, people will be served by dry cleaners in a certain city? How many shoes will be produced for certain regions, for certain region. How many, how much of a grain will be um, grown, you know, uh, of certain quality of certain grade and so forth. Now, of course, when <coughs> Russia was born, Gosplan ended its existence and there was free economy. Free economy at its pure form. 
No government control whatsoever. The 90s were wild. No government control. No licensing. No regulations. Uh, almost no taxes. There were taxes, but people weren't paying them. Um, just complete, complete control up to uh, uh, chaotic, complete lack of control up to chaotic free markets, so to speak, you know. And it was great. In my eyes, 90s were so good. Um, lots of problems, of course, but that's a, it's like birth of a new country and birth, very difficult birth. But the country that was being born was shaping to be fantastic. Uh, then the government decided to step in, and uh, it's, uh, basically the government started growing stronger. It stepped in and decided to control the economy. At first, it was regulations. Increased standards, increased regulations. If you wanted to build an apartment building, you had to go and apply for permissions uh, from different organizations of the government. If you wanted to buy, uh, to build your own house for yourself, you still would have to go and get permissions. If you wanted to open business, some businesses were um, um, licensed and more and more businesses, the licensing increased over the years and so forth. You get the idea. But still, in Russia that I knew, up till 2022, 20, uh, people were free to start business or stop business, <laughs> liquidate business. They were free to produce anything they wanted to and sell it to any anyone they wanted to at any price. All the government cared really was paying taxes and, you know, operating within uh, norms of law, so to speak, the framework of law. Now, recently, there's a new law being developed and I think it's going to be signed into existence very soon. That gives government great powers to re regulate economy, businesses. And I think this is very important law, and this is the end of free business in Russia. Because, well, we're still more or less free. But listen to this. In times of special needs, military well, the government, uh, a military acting as government, government representative, can actually dictate businesses, private companies, of how much and at what cost the government would buy their products. And the businesses will not be able to say no. Let's say you are uh, producing plates and, and you, your plates are high quality and, uh, you know, you sell them, that's more free market, export them, let's say, sending them to Hungary. And all of a sudden the government comes in and says, uh, hey, you know what, the, we need your plates. We need you to um, sell us 100,000 plates in, in, I don't know, next six months at the price of $1 a plate, say, hey, I send my plates to Hungary at $18 a pop, and uh, why should I sell it to you? And they'd give you the law and say, this is a federal law, such and such. You cannot say no, otherwise you go to prison. You say, wait a second, I don't want to do business anymore. This is a federal law. You must do this and this, otherwise you go to prison. You'd be breaking the law. So law is still being discussed, as far as I understand, and it's not clear, but you get the idea. As soon as they actually create this law, I will inform you. That is the end of free markets in Russia, in my eyes. And as of now, the government has been regulating economy heavily. For example, Russian ruble is incredibly strong right now. Well, it's kind of lost about 15% of its value in two, da two days, but still, it's extremely strong compared to the previous 10 years, okay? And the strength of Russian ruble is 
totally artificial because the government limited businesses, limited private people, uh, regular people, and how much currency, foreign currency, people can transfer, how much currency they can withdraw, okay? Basically, they cannot transfer currency to anywhere, and they cannot withdraw cash, uh, like let's say American dollars. If someone receives a payment in American dollars, well, too bad, you can't get cash. Anyway, there are quite a few, there have been quite a few uh, actions by the government. They, they limited powers and they, they um, basically destroyed free market for um, banking services, heavily regulated now by the central bank, and for uh, free trading of foreign currencies such as dollar, euro, and so forth. That is totally the USSR. Um, if you remember, Russian Soviet ruble was incredibly strong. For one dollar, well, one dollar, one American dollar, you could buy at 60 kopecks. Okay, so one ruble, almost two dollars. The thing is, it was not possible to buy dollars, okay, legally. It was illegal to buy, illegal to sell and illegal to own. But the dollar, ruble was very strong. The dollar cost, um, you know, uh, $2 for one ruble. So kind of the same system. And I see very strong parallels. And you know what? This is just the beginning. The government has tasted the blood, and that's going to develop this limitations, regulations, and it's going to intrude into the free markets more and more and the goal of this intrusion such future intrusions will be obviously the you know well-being of the government so that's number two and number three in my eyes the most important the most significant thing that um divided Soviet Union and Russia was the ideology. See, Soviet Union was all about ideology. It was, um, how do I even say, everything was about ideology. You, there was an ideology of socialism and communism, and as a member of society, you could not live outside of that ideology. If you were outside, you were outcast, and you simply did not exist as a citizen, okay? They were outcasts, very few of them, but they were ridiculed, they were prosecuted, and they were simply non-existent in the society. And it was not a comfortable place to be an outcast outside of the Soviet society. The ones who are watching right now and are from Eastern Europe and remember the good old days, so to speak, you know what I mean. Because your countries, where you had socialism, had the same thing. Only in the Soviet Union, that was on steroids. Okay, it was, it was our way or highway. That's it. And highway did not mean you could leave the country. No, highways go to the woods and live in the woods. That kind of a highway, you know. And um, you will not get education, you will not get medical service, nothing. That kind of a highway. Russia, 1991, yeah, ideology just dissolved. We didn't have any ideology. Um, making a buck was the ideology. And that's one of the problems, actually, I think, um, that Russia is having right now, that back in the 90s, it didn't have ideology. This Soviet ideology, this terrible, horrible thing, it had to be replaced with something new and good and it wasn't replaced it, it, it wasn't replaced with anything okay so the russians were lost and uh, the only ideology was making a dollar surviving you know being rich good being poor bad that's pretty much it and it reached very high um points so to speak it was very strong ideology stronger than needed but anyway, no one dictated it. People bore, uh, uh, this ideology was born inside of people's minds. That was freedom. 
complete freedom. Nothing was coming from the government. And it was great. I loved it. Compared to the USSR, oh, it's fantastic. Now, um, how do I say that? Last five years, I started noticing that the government was coming up, well, came up with a new idea, and I was trying to seed the idea into the heads of Russians. And the idea was, you'd be surprised, but that was, you know, the idea from the USSR. Um, we in Russia have our own way. And our own way is the strong government, order, stability. We are surrounded by the enemies. The enemies have been trying to put us down and they succeeded in the 90s. But now we are getting up on our feet again. Okay, and that was kind of a general idea in our society. But then what happened on February 24th changed everything, okay? People started thinking of official ideology, and they just came up with one. The first science, the seeds, the first early birds of this ideology is this. The Soviet youth organizations are being reborn. The pioneers are back. Couple words about pioneers. You see, in order to condition people, you have to start from the very early age, from five, six, first grade, and you have to involve um, children into your uh, way of thinking. By the time they reach high school, they're done deal, finished product, and something like that never happened in Russia from ninety one to twenty twenty two, but. Today it was announced that the pioneer organization, the youth organization, is back. But back advanced and improved. Pioneers 2.0. Back in the old good Soviet days, the pioneers were, um, I think you had to be, you had to reach third grade. Third grade. You had to be in third grade. Um, so that's, eight years old. Now, the pioneers, today, uh, one of our Russian officials introduced this new, um, new uh, pioneer idea about pioneers, new, new, new ideology, new, uh, basically the government says that pioneers are reborn, six years old, first grade. They take pioneers, Make pioneers first graders. Michael is five and a half. In three months, he will be six. He can't think well enough for himself. He's not able. He's, he's young enough. And they want to make him pioneer. Um, I understand that this movement of putting focus on kids is just the beginning. There will be kids, youth, uh, young adults, a party will be reborn. It's not going to be a communist party, but, you know, some kind of a party. And this um, framework, you go to the first grade, you get into the pioneers, then you get into a Komsomol, then you get into the party, and so forth. That's going to be put in place fairly soon. To me, the USSR is reborn today. When I heard official information from a uh, Russian bureaucrat, Russian uh, official about the birth of pioneer organization. It's not just for the kids. Okay, this is huge. 
This shows that the government has taken control of our lives now and for all. And they're very serious about that. They start interfering with us parents, where we are supposed to be parenting our kids. They want to replace us with them. They want to start now at least co-parenting. And um, that's it. That's the USSR. Good old country is back. This has been my message. I hope you found it interesting. I find this message not so interesting for myself as um, scary. Um, I want you to do this. Put yourself into my shoes. Imagine that you're a parent of a five-year-old. And imagine that the government introduces this youth movement, the pioneers. And your kid needs to become a pioneer. And of course, it's voluntarily. I mean, no one makes you to become a pioneer. But if your kid does not become one, he's looked down upon from his friends in school because, you know, everyone is pioneering. He's not. Uh, by the teachers, what's wrong with you? Are you against the government? Are you against us? Are you, are you parents against us? Okay. And um, your kid starts asking questions. Oh, daddy, mommy, why am I a pioneer? Why am I a pioneer? You know, what's wrong with me? Um, what would you say? How would you feel? Please let me know in the comments. Just before I turn on the comments, one little example. Everyone I knew was a pioneer. I was a pioneer myself. Um, back in 1980 something, 86, 87, they made me a pioneer. Back then I was like third grader. It was an honor for me, okay? Uh, the kids who excelled at school, I, I excelled. I had only A's, straight A's. They were taken, they were given this opportunity to become pioneers one month earlier than everyone else. And oh boy, I was proud. I really was. And one month later, everyone around me kind of automatically became pioneer. We had to do a pledge, an oath, and so forth, you know. But there were a couple people I knew that they weren't pioneers. And they were Baptists. Because a large Baptist family, and uh, the baptism, the basically the parents, they, they couldn't be uh, part of the government, the communist government. They were against the government ways. And uh, we understood that. We, we knew that they were Baptists. They were cool kids, you know, the large family, seven or eight kids. And a couple of them were my age. Um, I made friends with a couple of them. But they were open about their faith, and they never had this red ties. We had red ties, we were pioneers, they didn't. And they were always in what we call in Russia, white crows. Okay? Um, every single day, they didn't have the, uh, the red ties, I'm sorry, not the white ties, the red ties, and they, they were considered strange. Okay. So, uh, before I turn on the comments, I'm asking you to keep this chat civil. There are rules. The biggest rule is common sense. Please use common sense to, um, before you post anything. Don't troll Russian only. You know, this chat is for subscribers only. Let me know what you think. If you were in my shoes, if you were a parent of a young kid and uh, you were faced with this necessity, possibility, opportunity to 
be, uh, so for your kid to become a pioneer voluntarily, but you know what I mean. Mommy is number one today. Howdy, howdy. Ultra Sassy Becca, M93, Toro 8 Star, Lorna, Remakers, Palver, Flex, Susan, the usual suspects, my friends. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Thanks for listening to my message. I hope you found it interesting. There's a super chat from Reese Gray. Hello from Canada, Mr. Popula. I wonder if you saw this groundwork being laid while it was happening or just retrospectively. If you saw it happening, what were your feelings about that at the time? I saw it happening. But you know what? I think I'm the only person in Russia who actually saw that happening and understood what, be, what was being done. Even before February 24th, if you can go and watch my videos, I made numerous videos about that, where I criticized the government in, uh, for example, right off the bat, um, Russia is going cashless. If you watch that video made one year ago, okay, um, I was telling how the government laying groundwork for changes of controlling people's bank accounts and going cashless. If you go cashless, then you give up control. You don't have cash in your pocket. You know, you depend on your bank and your bank account can be frozen at any time. Okay. That's, that's just one of the videos I made. So I saw it again. I was the only one. Um, no one else was, everyone was saying, I discussed it with other people. They were saying, Oh, you know what? That's not a big deal. Hey, don't worry about it. It's just, just, this is a law. Oh, I know it's possibly, no one's going to use it against us. You know, oh, come on, don't be a conspiracy theorist. Oh, I think you've taken, take it, taken it too far. This is kind of response I was getting. Okay. Uh, we all are free people. We have heads on our, he uh, on our shoulders. Um, anyway, thank you, Reese. Thanks for the super chat. My feelings, how do I say that? If, if, if I was in uh, live television right now, and if I was saying about how I truly was feeling about that, they would um, cover it with uh, beep sounds. Beep, 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 you know, swear words. That's how I was feeling. Guys and girls, if you want me to notice, please let me know uh, your comments in caps. Right, type them in caps, uh, your questions in caps. Again, please let me know how would you feel about your son or daughter or granddaughter or grandson becoming a pioneer. A plus Russian. Hello, my hubby was a pioneer. I was too young inside Russia. I was a pioneer myself. Uh, conditioning. Constant conditioning. Constant conditioning. Every single, well, not day, but every single week. Reminded that we're young communists. That we're the, you know, the new shift for uh, young generation. We will replace all communists and so forth. Uh, I was a pioneer from 80, I think 85, 86 to uh, 80 to 90. And then <clears throat> you don't quit being pioneer, but you, um, you didn't quit to be pioneer, but you joined Komsomol. That's a higher branch. And Komsomol was serious, okay? Komsomol was a youth organization, had powers had organization, had representation in the uh, Soviet parliament, so to speak, had um, very powerful leaders, very powerful. So uh, I never became Komsomol. Uh, uh, I never joined Komsomol. I made an honest, conscious decision. Everyone in my class, uh, when time came and there was a head Komsomol guy in our school, said, okay, boys and girls, when are you going to join this year? We basically said, you know what? eat this. The guy was shocked. This is what we did. And he said, well, you know what, you're not going to enter college. No one's going to take you, like accept you to the university if you're not Komsomol. You won't be able to get a job. You're crazy. 
And I said, well, you know what? We may be crazy, but we don't want to join. I did this, and you know what? I'm pretty darn proud of myself for that. MM93, $5. I don't think kids should be brainwashed by teachers. Only taught the subject they will need in life. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. My thoughts exactly. Parish, Florida, from David Moyers. Did the Beatles predict this or uh, John and Paul Prophets? John, John and Paul Prophets. Did the Beatles? <laughs> if it's a joke, I didn't get it. Sorry, David. Um, if anyone uh, here knows, would you please type RW, $20. Thank you. Constantine, I'm so sorry to hear these things. More subtle form of this sort of indoctrination of children has been going on here for years. These are truly dark times. RW, thank you for the super chat. And you know what? I'm really, really sorry to hear that. It's not only here that is happening. Isa Sak Sakinin, glossness, new level needed. Uh, not too long ago, I made a stream about uh, glossness in Perestroika. We need glossness. We need Perestroika again. Gerald Jones, thank you so much for the contribution. Every English pound counts these days. Thank you. Pioneers sounds like went on in Cuba when the kids were supposed to report of what they saw. Robert, I've been to Cuba and I saw pioneers. Their organization was copied from ours. Their ties were the same as ours. Okay, uh, I, I saw these kids back in like 2010 or 28. And I'm like, no way. I can't believe this is happening someplace else. But we were not supposed to report on what we saw. We were not supposed to spy on our parents. No, nothing like that happened. That's, I'm, I'm honest with you. I'm, I'm saying things as they were, the bad and the good. Pioneers, well, the good that we were kind of proud to be part of this organization. It was our first achievement, so to speak. But we never questioned what kind of achievement, what kind of organization that was, okay? And the bad was, well, if I had a choice, I would not join. I would join those Baptist kids. Bob S. I, did I say hi to uh, moderators? I'm sorry. Bob S., Lorna, Mommy, Robert. Harry is away today. And uh, Pinball is taking a rest after giving out that generator. I started watching the stream yesterday and I fell asleep after like three minutes. It was four in the morning or three in the morning. Arnis, howdy. Uh, hello again. Good to see you again. Hug from Riga. You to me are the true Russian bear. Thank you. Thank you, Arnis. Representing the Russia that could have been, should have been, and I hope will still be yet. Stay strong, stay safe. Thank you. I really appreciate the super chat. I appreciate the words, um, the wish. Just one thing, Arnis. Please tell me how to be safe and how to be strong. I don't really know. I know everything. I just don't know these two things. How to be safe and how to be strong. Give me the recipe, please. And I will follow it up to every single letter. You can't force people to love or like you and only achieve the opposite by making them pretend. Hello from New York, USA. KWN, YAP State. Uh, you know what? You're right and you're wrong. You're right sitting in upstate New York. Okay, uh, that's where you probably were born and raised. And you breathe freedom. Every single breath you take is freedom. Okay, and you haven't seen anything else. I have. And trust me, you can't force to like it, to like you. 
uh, you can't force people like you, not, not you, but the government can force people like it because it just needs to be smart and it needs, it must start working at early age. By the time kids graduate from high school, they, they like the government, okay? I've seen that happen. That's artificial liking, but it's liking anyway. I mean, they're, they're sincere in liking, it's just they're uninformed. Big Zampano XXL, thank you so much. My best wishes to you and your family. Hope you are wrong in your message. Oh my gosh, I am so hoping that I'm wrong in my message. You know what? I couldn't have been happier if I turned out to be wrong in my message. If I'm wrong in my message, I'm going to take a bottle of champagne and I'm going to have a huge celebration. And I'm going to stand on my knees and apologize, say, Russian government, please forgive me. I was so wrong. I was so misinformed. You meant well. You didn't want bad things for us. You did. You, you wanted, we were your concern at the end, okay? If I'm making a mistake, you know what? I'll be a happy, happy, happy person. I hope I'm making a mistake. Ah, uh, Chrissy Walker. Thank you so much for your message. I know, and uh, there are some circumstances. Just, it's not easy. It's not easy. Trust me, it's so difficult. I wish I could tell you more things that I can. Brian Woods, Ola from Los Angeles. LA, what a place. Lay. Can you homeschool? That's a good question. Yes, I can. We can. But you know what? Kids are not supposed to be homeschooled. Because kids, besides going to school for knowledge, for information, they, it's what I think is mo even more important, they get their first lessons in social behavior, making friends, um, solving problems, finding right ways out of certain situations fighting how to like solve conflicts how to make friends things like that that's hugely important we are social creatures we cannot sit we cannot be live in isolation we all lived in isolation for months okay and you know what i didn't like it i think neither did you we're supposed to socialize be a part of community right here you know what I really get um, doing the streams, right? I give information of what I am seeing in Russia with my own eyes and I share. But I also get a lot in return. That is you. I really appreciate you because this is a community. This is not just a live stream. I come in here and I expect to see certain people. I'm so used to their nice words their support, their help, the mods are here, um, the usual suspects are here, the new people come in, they support me with wishes, you support me with wishes and so forth. And then school is also a community for a child. Child cannot sit home. I've seen children homeschooled. They're very smart, but you know what? They're misfits. They're not happy when they come out of like, you know, into life because Life is not homeschooling. Life is not sitting home. You're not going to be trading stock in front of your computer like for 50 years and not seeing everyone. So I think homeschooling is not the way to go. I'm sorry. The S, former East German pioneer. <laughs> no pasaran. Yes, that did escalate very quickly. There are two types of people in this chat right now, I believe. The the Westerners who have no clue what the pioneers were, uh, who have no clue how it was to be pioneer, and the Eastern Germans, uh, not, not the Eastern, Eastern Europeans, who actually were pioneers and who knew what pioneers were all about, you know.
Sandy Workman, thank you so much. Again, it's not that easy. There are circumstances. I wish it was. I wish it was. Just, I... W anyway. Hcom, Maine. Jimmy Penrose. Howdy, howdy. Mena. It's the job of the school to teach kids how to think, not necessarily what to think. Exactly. You know what? My fellow Mainer, I swear, Mainers are fantastic people. What you've just said is absolutely my opinion. Isa, how about glasnost in Perestroika? How about it? What about it? <laughs> we need it. Feras 699, who do you think is responsible for what is happening in Russia? What responsibility do Russian citizens have? <sighs> this is uh, such a heavy question. How... Let's take a person who doesn't make much money, whose life is miserable, who drinks, who um, can't afford even basic necessary things, who um, doesn't have a job. Life is miserable, okay? Person gets by, okay? And he's always unhappy and he always is blaming someone else. The government, the neighbors, the parents, siblings, and so forth. Do you think that the parents, the government, the siblings, the family, the neighbors are responsible for that person being unhappy? I think we all bear responsibility for our happiness. And as citizens, we also bear responsibilities of what is hap well, what happens in our countries. And darn, my responsibility, I am responsible. And that may, doesn't make me feel very, very well. I failed. I failed my country because there have been processes of social interaction, of uh, voting and um, involvement into the governing, local government, governing and so forth. I failed my country. I failed my family. I failed my, I don't know, neighbors. And my neighbors did. And everyone else around me. We're the citizens. We're responsible. Okay, that's the responsibility number one. And trust me, that's a terrible feeling to understand. That is my fault. Wook, thank you so much for a huge super chat. 100 euros. Thank you for your latest video with your wife on the inside. Look at the current state of retail and malls in Russia. Please keep up the economic info. Exactly why I continue to be a Patreon member. Thank you so much. Um, well, I hope you found, I'm glad you found that interesting. Um, you see, me and Natasha, we went out to do uh, filming in a shopping mall. And it was time out for ourselves, just two of us. We actually had fun doing that. It was Sunday. Um, not this past one, but Sunday before. And then a couple of days later, we learned about that terrible event. And I didn't feel like releasing the video. I didn't feel, I didn't even want to edit this. Edit like nothing. And uh, only after over a week, my hands were actually were able to to produce it. Um, well, I'm glad you liked it. We were shocked at the state of current affairs. I uh, didn't really say that much on camera because I don't want to influence people's opinions too much. You are there to see with your own eyes. My camera does not lie. I'm not trying to make things prettier than they are or I'm not trying to make them uglier than they are. I simply walk around and film and you make your decision whether you think it's normal or not. Uh, well, I'll keep on doing that. 
Thank you so much for the super chat again. Ludmila, good evening. Sylvia, hello. This pioneer thing is scary, scary. I can't believe it's uh, 2356 already. Wow, time flies. There was something like this in Italy. Okay, thank you, Sylvia. I will not go there. Andrew Carter, the Poles revived the Boy Scouts eventually after having Soviet-style Soviet -style pioneers. Maybe that option should be available to people. Andrew, excellent, excellent point and excellent information. I think that youth organization is important. And young boys and girls must be involved into something. But the key question is, what is that organization all about? What is it going to be teaching? I had no prob problems with Boy Scouts. They're teaching good things. They're teaching survival. They're teaching uh, camaraderie, so to speak, and, you know, things like that. Uh, they're giving kids experiences. I didn't hear uh, anything of Boy Scouts teaching uh, ideology. <laughs> there is no ideology in America, just like the same as we had in the, in, in the USSR, really. Uh, American ideology is patriotism. American kids are taught to be patriots uh, right from the birth, you know, and I have no problem with that. I wish Russian kids were taught how to be patriots by other than parents, okay? Mods, uh, if possible, 10 more minutes. Um, just, I guess it's a pretty important message today. If not, just let me know in the chat. Jukes, D, thank you. May God bless and keep your family. Interesting how uh, Russia-influenced countries as diverse as Syria, Romania, and Cuba. Well, Soviet Union, I wouldn't say Russia. Soviet Union, yes, it did influence. Actually, believe it or not, but there were good things about the USSR. And... Um, it influenced through <laughs> the good and the bad, and the ugly, I guess. I... Bob S., thank you so much. To quote the Beatles back in the USSR, uh, con Contra Joe, go and watch. I made the entire video where actually I sang, not the same song, but I was singing back into the USSR. That's the only video you can see me singing, and you probably will. Uh, no more videos like that ever. Um. LA Confidential, I still want to see Evgeny again. Um. I haven't figured out how to, like, to approach this guy. There's not much to be interviewed about, I guess. Um, and we, I, I, I've decided to stop doing the Saturday walks. It's not feeling really good about filming, like, things are peachy, dory around me. Uh, anyway, perhaps, perhaps. I'm still in Rostov. I'm going to be in Rostov for a while, so perhaps... Thanks for bringing him up. That guy is quite incredible. David Moyers, Beatles White Album, back into the USSR. I see, I got it. Okay, thank you. There are so many questions, and I am sorry I cannot answer all of them. I'm limited by time, so please forgive me. Um, but 
Thank you for sharing. I go over and I read all the chat after I am done, usually, and uh, thank you so much. Your message uh, will not, not go unread. Tony J, thank you so much. Glad I finally caught a live. Stay healthy. Thank you so much, Tony. Well, trying to, trying to stay healthy. At my age, I, I'm not, well, not succeeding. I'm, I'm, I'm fairly healthy, but you know what? As I age, health does not improve, so to speak. Uh, Anastasia E says Russia is his home. If you're talking about me, then yes, Russia is my home. And I made a conscious decision to come back, leave my comfortable, awesome life in the USA and to come back to Russia because Russia is my home. Russia is where I was born, where my family, mom and dad, live. Dad lived. Um, I love this country. I want to live here for the rest of my life. If I can, if I'm allowed, if I... I'm not prosecuted for just basic wishes and needs. Tonya Christian, head to Maine, brother. Thank you, Tonya. Again, there are circumstances. There are Casey, what more could you have done for your country and what can you do now? <laughs> Good question. Well, I could have done more. I could have been more active. And uh, 140 million people around me could have been more active too. But then uh, there's nothing we can do about that. That's in the past. What can you do now? I don't know. I do live streams. I I uh, keep on what's going around me. I spread the message. I pray every single day, multiple times. I pray publicly with you. I invite everyone to pray for things that I find important. And I pray myself before I fall asleep, after I wake up. What else I can do? I keep asking myself this question every single day. John Wakamatsu, Wild Wolf Pack, howdy howdy. <laughs> It'd be nice to have a Star Trek teleporter. Boom! I'm on uh, Sebago, Maine. He would have to apply for visas. And visas are not issued to Russians any longer. So you know. Big hoops to jump through. Uh, Wild Wolf Pack. Thank you so much. Thank you. You are the only person who actually made a sane assessment of the situation. I heard so many... So many... I don't know, calls, comments, wishes. Okay, why don't you just leave everything and go to Maine? Um, why don't you just go to the USA? Why don't you just go to Australia, UK and stuff like that? That's great, but do you know how difficult that is for a Russian to go to the USA? Do you know how difficult that is to go to Australia? You think anyone would will, will let me into the United States without a visa? And the visas are not issued. So you tell me how I get to the United States. You tell me how I get to Australia, to UK, you know. Well, I have visas to European countries, but you tell me, like, like how. That'd be fantastic, you know. So I think you understand, <laughs> wild wolf pack. <laughs> yeah. Teleport. Bim. Vato Loco, I'm married with a beautiful Russian woman. I'm German. I'm proud to be pro ru You know what? There's nothing to be pro ru I am pro ru pro-Russian. I am actually a patriot. I love my country. What's wrong with that? It's an honor to be a patriot of Russia. 
I am proud of that. So that makes two of us. <laughs> Uh, except for I'm Russian and my wife is German. Well, she's uh, German-Russian. <laughs> she's also pro-Ru. Um, she loves Russia. She was born and raised here. You know, think think this. Before, before I stop, finish the stream, think this. All of you. You have lives. You have families. You were born and grew up in countries. You speak language, you know, your first language, you got education. Now an event happens in your country right now. And tomorrow morning you wake up and you need to leave your country. It means you have to find a place where you go, a different country. You have to learn the language. You have to... Um, Leave everything behind, work experience, life experience, and you have to start from scratch, from your white piece of paper. You have to start, write everything. Um, how, how do you feel about that? Probably should make a stream about that. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a good topic. Let me tell you, I've done that before, but I was young and that was completely different. I was not forced to leave. It's okay to leave your country for a new place where you actually follow your dream, okay? Um, but when you're forced or you will be prosecuted if you don't leave, that's or something else happens to you, like to Ukrainians, you know, that's different. That's... Put yourself into our shoes. Think how it would feel. God forbid it happens to you, okay? <sighs> Mama, two boys, I was a Cub Scout leader. Good, good. There's nothing wrong with that. Janice Burgess, leaving sounds good on paper, but in reality it's very hard, might be almost impossible. Janice, thank you. It breaks many people's lives. People get lost. People start drinking. People cannot succeed in a new place. People cannot learn new language. People feel like outcasts. I've seen bad immigration cases in the United States, you know. Not all immigrants can transform, especially if you're forced to leave, if you follow your dreams, if you follow the money trail, if you follow new job, you know, that's different. Your eyes, you're optimistic, you know, but if you're forced to leave, if you flee your country, that's so different. John Liebold, political asylum may be possible, but family is hard to uproot. Not easy. <laughs> John, you know what I'm talking about. Well, you know what you're talking about. John Liebold uh, is a, a good friend of mine. He, he's been around the world, and you know what? He lived in Rostov-on-Don. We shared some opinions about that. So thank you, John. Good, good, good comment. Bo Decor, Constantine, are you a USA citizen? No, I'm not a U.S. citizen. Anastasia, he was probably on visitor education visa. No, I was not on visitors or, well, I was at some point on visitors visa, but I was married to a U.S. citizen at the time. Um, I was legal. <laughs> I was not illegal in the United States. Time is up. Oi. You know what? It's been a good stream. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, it's a circus today. Well, it wasn't a circus for me, Robert. It was a very important message for me, and I hope that people liked it. Um, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look at the stream as I'm done, and it's eleven past midnight. Thank you so much. If you haven't watched my video that I uploaded yesterday uh, please go ahead and do about the shopping mall walking tour 
that's the latest video well thank you very much for having me today for listening to me thanks for support good wishes for the super chats very appreciated thank you i would like to invite everyone to pray with me and if you are religious please pray if you're non-religious um just please pray with us and send good wishes and vibes to people john i know you're atheist but please pray with us and join with us and just send good wishes to the people who are going to be in our prayers so let's do it dear god thank you so much for giving us a good day today thank you for providing food on our tables and roofs over our heads please keep on doing so thank you for surrounding us with good people family friends loved ones children grandchildren parents grandparents thank you um, thank you for hearing our children grandchildren love please keep them safe and, and healthy um, please help ukrainians people who need help in my neighboring country um, please give them strength answer their prayers make their wishes come true send them angels every single person who's in ukraine ukrainians u.s ukrainian army russian army uh, soldiers so there will be no bloodshed the angels may come down and end this conflict please help we keep asking you every single day please hear us please open hearts of people who can make who make decisions on whether to stop or continue and fill them with love mercy forgiveness compassion make their hearts soft please reach out and touch heart of vladimir putin russian president and fill it with love make it softer fill it with forgiveness compassion mercy so he makes a decision to stop the bloodshed please help my country send it an army of strong angels with sharpest swords led by saint michael so they get rid of the demons that have hijacked my country and make it run make them run my country make it righteous again make it shine again please give us wisdom to bring our children up in a way that when they become adults they will they will make this world a better place and will never fight with one another it's really really needed please help every single woman who's pregnant and trying to make a decision whether to keep the baby or not uh, reach out and touch mind and heart of every woman in that position so every woman makes the right choice please help everyone in this live stream who's praying with us or watching us pray thank you for bringing us together in this stream and then in, in this community in this group and thanks for the opportunity f to pray together thank you so much please answer everyone's prayer and make everyone's wish come true i would like to mention a few people please help them they really really need your help they are nine veka Rafaela, Anna, Elena, Natasha, Jake, Michael, Olya, Dasha, Sky, Bonnie and Igor, Buzz and Mary, Jean-Paul, Paula, Janine, Michael, Ma <coughs> Marlene, 
Narnian Lady, Susan S, Freddy, Fireflies, Firefly Farm, um, Susan, Fiona, Chirper, Paul, Stephen, Ellen, Michelin, Priscilla, Martin, Donald, who's asking twice, once for himself and once for his country, the USA. Ariana, Liz, Bruce, Kayleen, Michael, Thomas, Tonya, Bob, Jessica, Minutes to Midnight, um, I would like to pray for countries of NATO, Alliance and Russia so they get together and start negotiating peace agreement so the bloodshed ends and also I have three children I'd like to uh, who want to be mentioned by their family and loved ones they are Maverick, Sebastian and Britzel please help them um, the families need the kids to get better and come back home please perform your miracle and show your might and shine on them on these children and on their families i also would like to ask for everyone who's down with covid and their families please please help them amen my friends thank you very much for another stream um i liked it some streams are better than others you know in my books some streams are heavier some are lighter some are more funny some are never boring for me at least but this was this was a good one thank you so much for coming you're awesome and you rock and i will see you tomorrow